Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Nice. There we are. Awesome. Awesome. We are live. We are live. Excellent. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is March 5th, 2023, and we're doing our drop in math tutoring session number number 83, I believe. Number 83. Uh, there's more. There's more. But uh, official count is 83. I hope you're doing well. And this is sort of uh, us making time for uh, to teach a little bit of mathematics every I was doing it every week. Uh, we've dropped the ball on that one because I got busy with uh, uh, just different things and whatnot, right? So um, we haven't done one for a couple of months at least, but we're gonna get back into more of a regular routine uh, going into the new year. Uh, or not new year, well, beginning of the new year anyway, we're in March, so a couple of months into the new year. This is the first one we've done this year, I think, anyway. Uh, Plutonic Polaris, hello, hello, hope you're doing well, and welcome to a nice chill math live stream. Um, while we wait for notifications to go out, I'm going to give my little intro. Uh, Lark Bark, how are you doing? Hello, buddy. What's up, my man? Uh, and to everyone, hello, hello, hello. Ezkiel, Lord Ezkiel, how are you doing? Good evening to you as well. I'm um, good early afternoon. I've been uh, I've been munching on pomegranates. Right, take a look at this. I've got uh, I already had a little bowl of pomegranates, and uh, I mixed this one with apples, and I put in a little bit of uh, dried mint on top. So uh, pomegranates that I just this morning bought a whole bunch, put them in a big bowl. I brought the big bowl to show you guys. Uh, I had a, as soon as I did it, I had a nice bowl of it, and then with apples and mint fantastic so good so good and pomegranate seeds by themselves are fantastic but i like eating them with apples and different types of fruits as well right and the mint on top so good so good here's the bowl of pomegranates i topped up this morning it's really good pomegranate season. This is the second bowl we're, we've had, or we're having. We already had one and a half bowls. So basically, this was um, eight large pomegranates. Uh, so good, so good. And when you start eating it at the bottom, the liquid pomegranate juice starts uh, building up. So when you get to the bottom, you can just drink the pomegranate juice. That's so good. <laughs> Yes. And this, of course, with yogurt and in in, um, in cereals and stuff that we've done before, uh, very delicious, very delicious. I hope you guys have good snacks. I hope you guys have good snacks. Shirtless Kylo, how are you doing? Hey Chicho, been a while. Kept up on YouTube, but glad I'm here for a stream. Awesome, awesome, shirtless. And by the way, you're not getting all the videos <laughs> that we've been uploading on YouTube. Which is fine, which is fine, right? But, uh, you know, a lot of the political and controversial stuff cannot be loaded on uh, on SensorTube. Uh, I do try uploading <laughs> uploading them every now and then. <laughs> the shadow banning on the SensorTube is crazy, right? Uh, you know, I load on something that is not approved by SensorTube uh, sensors, uh, the technocrats. And uh, all of a sudden, we start losing subscribers, <laughs> right? And it's not people just unsubscribing. I just had someone yesterday come up to me and say, uh, on the sensor to send a message saying, oh, I'm so glad I found you again, Chicho. For some reason, now I realize why well, I wasn't getting notifications. I don't get notifications from sensor to, by the way, at all, anything, anywhere. Right? But he said, I don't get notifications from you uh, because uh, sensor to, he called it YouTube, uh, unsubscribing without me knowing I go yeah I've had a few of these messages over the last three four years right so uh, just a heads up if you want to see everything that we do you want to be on ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. you want to be on you want to be on Doink. you want to be on BitChute or Rumble and Odyssey that's where we upload everything okay 
Oh, you would kill as as kill. Good pomegranate season. The first batch that came in at the beginning of winter wasn't that good. This is the third batch that I've caught anyway. So the first batch of pomegranates wasn't that good. The second batch was really good. This third batch is fantastic. Super good, super good. Yeah, and with nuts, plutonic pullers, for sure. And with the nuts, with walnuts is amazing. I love uh, pomegranates, uh, pomegranate seeds with walnuts. Uh, uh, pomegranate seeds with apple, pomegranate seed with apple and a little bit of mint, uh, dried mint, like just from our yard that every year I, harv I harvest mint and dry it and put it in jars and I go through whatever we dried usually in the winter. We have some left over, but, um, and we have videos of us drying mint, right? So good, so good. Let me take a look at this. this you can't keep, you, can, you can't beat this. This is like ultimate snack, right? So delicious, so, del so healthy, right? Mm. Eduardo, how are you doing? Mark Cortuas, hello, hello. Math lovers are in town, Eduardo. <laughs> Lark Bart, how does that two delicious donuts? Nice. <laughs> oh, so, shirtless Carlo Chicho, I make sure to hit bit shoot or just re watch on Twitch. Laugh out loud. I've been watching long enough to know <laughs> when I need to go to an, <laughs> to an out, out here platform to find something. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. It's crazy. Sensor tube is in. Like, wow. You it gets worse and worse on it like on a daily basis now it's so bad so bad wow i i you know anyway it is what it is lord ask you uh, it's 100 percent sensor to blocking notification and shadow banning videos. yeah we, we've been shadow banning up the yin yang hardcore crack how are you doing afternoon yeah pomegranate best <laughs> super delicious super delicious hope you're doing well oh yeah my little intro gang if you want to follow this work on my patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho chycho we also have a, a sub stack page and a subscribe star page so you can follow the work there for those of you that are supporting this work on patreon gang thank you very much for the support for being there and following the work as well as the support that we're getting on twitch it's mainly uh not mainly but um the support we're getting on Patreon, on Substack, on Twitch, and a handful of people that are supporting us through leaving it on censorship, censor too. Uh, your support counts for a lot, gang. So I do appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Thank you um, for sticking around. Okay, it's uh, it's an honor. It's an honor. And of course, mods that we have on uh, on Twitch and on Gilded and just within our community salute to the mods gang salute to the mods lark bark yeah that's why everyone jumping on rumble yeah big time big time rumble and bit shoot and and odyssey and rockfin and uh, and whatnot but for me i'm mainly on rumble bit shoot and odyssey those are the these are the main three platforms that i consume content on they're the main three platforms. SQL. I remember years ago I would get notifications for your videos, and the interaction was much more there. It's uh, censorship, shadow banning, like the entire channel. Creepy stuff. Creepy stuff. Like creepy. <laughs> like crazy creepy. Right? Like wow. Like it makes you feel gross just watching videos there. Brett Slinger, thank you very much for the subscribe for tier one sub uh, subscribe for 19 months currently on a 19 month streak salute salute thank you for the support Brett Slinger love when I catch it your live stream awesome glad to have you glad to have you and math is the core of what we do right so these these streams are uh, are amazing to me I love them plutonic plus I binge watch Chicho play on <laughs> Oh, frick to for giving Chicho advert money. Ah, <laughs> awesome. Let it play. Loop it. 
hilarious. <laughs> Explorer. Thanks, Plutonic Laris. Uh, you try and kick. You try and kick. You try and kick. Explore the world. You try and kick. I don't know what kick is. <laughs> What's kick? Cheerio, all. Cheerio. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, gang. Cheers. Cheers. And gang, we do announce these live streams. 30 minutes, 45 minutes before we go live on Twitter, Minds Gap, Parlor, um, uh, Getter. And which one is the other one? I can't remember. A VK and VK, all right. Uh, so you can follow the work there. And for live streams, when we don't have any visuals, which we do for mathematics, uh, we do upload uh, some podcasts on soundcloud.com forward slash chicho. And those podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon whatever you're following should be there the rss or or, or yeah rss links uh, are there somewhere uh, right gang we're doing mathematics and of course we have a gilded community you're definitely welcome to join us there uh, we left discord a while ago because it started censoring so we're not going to stick around on the platform that censors uh, not for discussions right and uh, we're on gilded and it's a fantastic community that we have there let me take these guys down. Let me take these guys down. Chicho, lick your uh, testing on YouTube for the ball. We gotta do. We're gonna do one of those uh, this spring, uh, most likely this spring, this summer for sure. We're gonna hit up the liqueur cabinet. I gotta do a cleaning on it and sort things out and you know dust it and stuff like this. We sort of moved it over here and. It's, out of sight out of mind right so we took her we took her liqueur cabinet away from the uh, sort of uh the cabinet that we had it on was in the living room so you just get up and help yourself with liqueur we put it in the sunroom over here um and uh it's out of sight out of mind right uh we tend to forget that the cures are there and have sips so i need to go through a thorough cleaning and consolidating and uh, see what we got and we're gonna do a nice two to three hour sampling uh, during a live stream. It's it's time we do another one. Probably have a cigar going at the same time. Oh yeah, man. I, okay, we're, let's go do it. Explore. It's a platform which will give you ninety percent, ninety five percent of your revenue. With yeah, I don't know it. I don't know it. Uh, go to our guild server, uh, link us up, and we'll take a look. Go to our guild server and link us up. Either in general folder or multiple other folders. Technology. We got technology and light topics, heavy topics. It'd be light topics, I guess. And uh, link us up. And or if you're working for them, we have a promo self promotion folder. You can link it up there. And be honest with us. Uh, if you work for something you believe in and you want to promote it, that's 100% fine with me, right? You're sharing your love. That's what creating content is and I'm okay with people uh, sharing uh, uh, platforms their ideas and stuff uh, that they believe in right um, so that's fine pirate in Pluto salutations salutations I hope you're doing well um, Maldras how are you doing Maladras how are you doing? Any plans for a 10 by 10 puzzle? Uh, we we got to do it, but I, want, I had planned on doing it, but then we started doing the world map, uh, mapping world conflicts. So I took down the 10 by 10 puzzle. So we will do this summer, the 10 by 10 puzzle for sure. Uh, but it's going to be delayed a little bit because I, I like having the map up. Me and my partner really I like having the map up right now. And we're going to do a, a mapping world conflicts uh elder god how are we doing welcome welcome uh we're gonna do uh one more mapping world conflicts uh this tuesday uh starting at 1 p.m and then that's going to be a, the final part it's part four of the mapping world conflicts for a few months right because the next two to three months are ridiculously crucial crucial in regards to uh geopolitics in domestic politics and economics and many other things, uh, social uh, structure of our societies. So we're gonna keep that up for two to three months. And then once we're done with that, when certain things play out, they roll out, 
hopefully calm down I doubt it it's gonna kick up um, then we'll put up the 10 by 10 puzzle no matter what turn down or kick up we'll do the 10 by 10 puzzle uh, in the summer we'll put it back up again okay uh, that's where we are uh, I only have so many walls in the house that I can put up a big grid like that we live in a house that uh, it's got a lot of windows so there aren't any too many big walls that I can do 10 by 10 puzzle <laughs> we went with napping world conflicts peanut butter pumpkin party salutations that will be awesome 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 yeah look here the liqueur videos were one of my favorites me too i end up uh, smiling a lot towards the end <laughs> big grin on my face right a plutonic blur so black blur is off the way Yay, all the gods here. And gang, do not forget, do not forget. Free Assange, Free Assange, Free Assange. Julian Assange, a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity, to me and you. Something that we desperately need in our societies. Okay, for more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or countless resources online to get you caught up as to what's really going on. Ah, oh, Elder God, you hopped on it right away. I didn't even see it. Nice. At a time of oh, Eskiel, Eskiel, you hopped on it right away. You're awesome, awesome, awesome. So, gang, we're here for mathematics. Elder God, by the way, check this out. Check this out. My snack, my snack for today. I just like taking spoonfuls of this. That's why I'm gonna keep on showing it. <laughs> Pomegranates, apples, and dried mint. The dried mint I harvested from our garden at my dad's patio when I go visit him. Okay. And uh, the pomegranates I picked up uh, a couple of days ago, two or three days ago. Uh, super delicious. Fantastic pomegranates. It's really good pomegranate season this year. This is what I topped out this morning. Eight large pomegranates gave us this. Okay. So eight large pomegranates. And uh, this is the second bowl like this that we're having. Uh, a couple of month and a half ago, we had another one. I did another run uh, to our pomegranate uh, supplier. <laughs> really delicious very healthy lots of antioxidants dairy free <laughs> dairy free <laughs> yeah I can't I can't really see well with yogurt pomegranates and yogurt fantastic right yeah SK looks so good now you're <laughs> just making me tell. I gotta show it off I gotta show it off I gotta show it off uh, gang, we're here to do mathematics, talk about education, we can do physics, whatever, or an open discussion, we can talk about whatever we want, we're going to talk about pomegranates, all, all stream if you like, um, Pyre and Pluto, I haven't had pomegranates in a while, uh, tempting me to get some, yeah, it, it really, super good, it used to be a lot cheaper <laughs> a few years ago, you could get uh, uh, the best price I got where I am in the west coast of Canada, I was able to in the past pick up like uh, three for five dollars right the best I ever got was four for five dollars they were a little bit smaller but four for five dollars uh, that, that's a dollar twenty five a pop fantastic right but right now these these pomegranates are about three bucks a pop um, so pretty on the expensive side right uh, at least doubled in price <laughs> in five years um, so it is what it is deep flake how you doing how you doing welcome to our live stream and gang um let me give a little notice regarding education uh, since we're doing a math live stream and it's about education really um, i mean if we had a legit education system in our countries i would be out of a job which i'm okay with i would I mean, if it was a legit 
education system, I would probably be working in the system teaching mathematics, but it's not a legit education system. Our current centralized schooling in at least Canada and the United States is exactly that, that schooling is indoctrination, indoctrination. And five years ago or so, I would, I would, I was still recommending, or I was still okay with kids being in school to, you know, learn social skills. And there was a little bit of education happening. Right now, it's not existent. They're abusing kids. They're brainwashing kids. It's pure indoctrination, and it's detrimental to their health, to your family's health, and to the society's health. So my recommendation to anyone that has children in school, pull them out, pull them out. Do not let the government brainwash your children. Do not let the government destroy your families. Do not let the government destroy our societies. It is complete 100% indoctrination. And a lot of parents know this already. A lot of, lot of, a lot of people I've interacted with, they know this already. Um, a lot of teachers know this. There's a lot of teachers that have left the system. There's a lot of parents that are homeschooling now. They're getting together with communities and forming collectives and teaching their children that way, bypassing, protecting, oh, that's a better word, protecting their children from predators that are trying to make uh, soldiers but weird types of soldiers soldiers to push their the centralized powers agenda right we're not talking about in general we're not talking about um, soldiers that are sent to the front lines to wage wars against other nations right they're indoctrinating kids uh, in the same way that there was actually a podcast linked up in our Gila server, which was fantastic. It was like a three hour podcast talking about it. And this we've known previously for a long time that this was coming, right? Which is one of the reasons that I started. Uh, I never went into the full blown centralized indoctrination centers to teach mathematics. I did my own thing. This was clear the direction that it was going 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago. That's when I've been teaching uh, privately mathematics, right? But basically this is an indoctrination system the same on the same level as marxism as fascism as maoism it's it's complete takeover of the mind of generations by centralized power to wage war on their own citizens i know i'm going deep with this my apologies i know this is supposed to be just mathematics but it is extremely related to education it is education and there's a reason why we need to do this uh, have these sessions to teach mathematics because a lot of kids are not being taught critical thought right they're not being taught critical thought they're being indoctrinated into a very brutal system and you don't want your children to be a part of that okay just needed to get that out uh, because it's coming it's becoming clearer and clearer where we are headed and it's not pretty if we don't stop it okay crack i use the map method as well for pomegranates but oh the tap method yeah 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 easy peasy well easy peasy it took me i listened to a podcast uh for about it was an hour podcast it took me about 35 minutes to tap out eight large pomegranates it's good for the i used to play drums right so i'm good it, i built up my these guys pretty good <laughs> so i can do this all day <laughs> right uh, or used to be able to do it all day i can do it at least for 35 minutes tapping up pomegranates super delicious super delicious Iron Pluto, yeah, I hear produce is pretty expensive. Yeah, crazy expensive. Uh, crazy expensive. That's one of the reasons in summertime or fall, late summer, early fall. Uh, well, for apples anyway, late summer, early fall, um, and mid fall, all the way to mid fall, we, we've located a few apple trees. 
that we hit up. So I pick a lot of apples, local apples, uh, in parks and beaches and uh, fields and stuff like this. We got bags in the car, so pick up, pick a lot of apples because uh, it's cheaper. Uh, it doesn't cost us anything except driving and a little exercise, right? Uh, pick our own plums, pick a lot of blackberries every year, uh, a lot of other fruits um, we pick, me and my partner pick in the spring, fall, and spring, summer, and fall. And it saves you a lot of money. We're talking hundreds of dollars it's saving you. And it's giving you outdoor time, and it's keeping you healthy, and it's getting you to know your local community, right? Your local area. Fantastic, fantastic. Also across the nation, decentralized education, decentralized education. There are people getting together with collectives right now, hiring independent educators to teach uh, like-minded uh, parents that want to protect their kids from indoctrination and want to empower them to become free-thinking human beings. That's my main job, by the way. <laughs> aside from teaching mathematics is to help uh, kids to become critical thinkers free right oh my god i fear for the current youth they are like, uh, there there are some very intelligent people there but they're the, the, the indoctrination is crazy powerful again it's crazy powerful the woke uh, the the agenda of wokeism pushed from centralized power is is intoxicating to a lot of youth which are trying to find a purpose in life right so as educators for for me anyway my main purpose is to try to empower uh, my students to decide their own fate to find their own passions to to really have critical thought and to try to um, become independent and realize basically to build up their BS detectors, their bullshit detectors well enough to realize when they're being played with or they're being, they're being lied to, right? That's my main, one of the main things I try to teach my students and I don't, I don't imprint them with my philosophy of life. I imprint them with my tools that I've acquired in life, which is a totally different thing, right? Centralized education tries to imprint, right? Kids in school with their ideology, with their doctrines, with their dogmas, with their, with their agenda, right? And if there is a tool that will prevent kids from being brainwashed they've pulled that out right they don't teach that anymore which is what's happening with mathematics they've cut the math curriculum like what they taught us in school me in school like 40 years ago is what they compared to what they're teaching now it's about 40 percent less now 30 to 40 percent less content in a ain't take any grade grade in high school grade 8 9 10 11 or 12 any grade there's 40 percent less content there than there was 40 years ago there's 30 percent less content there than there was 20 years ago that's right 15 year 10 year it, it's crazy it's crazy right so that's what centralized power is trying to do and how we prevent them right we teach kids how to be free thinking human beings critical thinkers we build up their bullshit detectors right we teach them how to read data how to read graphs how to how to smell the bullshit coming a mile away right which is what mathematics does lord ask you as a history student myself the very select part they teach in school says enough yeah <laughs> it's really crazy Right? I don't know about the massacres my country committed until I research it myself. In my opinion, they put heavy propaganda and uh, lesson plans. Indeed, it's garbage. Like, by the way, what we're talking about regarding education, it's not just math related. As Lord Eskiel is pointing out, it's everywhere. 
it's history history taught in taught in centralized indoctrination centers that's pure pure indoctrination pure indoctrination it's crazy as well as current media propaganda it's 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 an attack on humanity from all fronts right may it be your uh, consumption of food what you eat may it be news you watch may it be movies tv shows music on every front every front they're taking centralized power is taking taxpayer money from individuals from a society and the bureaucrats are deciding what to push on that society right in which direction so this is top-down management it's slavery right because the top control everything not just not just not just government right or bureaucracy they control everything right they set up the uh, school curriculums they fund media they fund movies they fund projects they fund artists they fund everything right with a society's money right so if you don't have a voice in the society i'll give you an example by the way this, this is straight up mathematics let's do let's do some political mathematics again apologies if i'm not reading uh the chat i'm just gonna uh, connect this up to mathematics right so check this out in canada okay political mathematics this is where mathematics comes into play right canada considers itself right states that canada is a democracy democracy right okay Here's Canada. Canada. Right. In the last elections in Canada, we had the following parties. We got the Liberals. Liberals. We got the Conservatives. Okay. We got the NDP. NDP. We got the Parti Quebecois. Okay. The that's mainly in Montreal in uh, Quebec, right? We got the Greens, okay, and we got the People's Party. Okay, let me let me make enough room for this, right? So we got the Liberals, Lib. We got the Conservatives. We got the NDP, NDP. We got the Parti Quebecois. Um, I forget what it, 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 it's not Parti. It, it's uh, anyway the the party is in Quebec right we got the greens and we got the people's party people's pcp people's can we're going to call them people's party i think it's people's i'm just going to say pp okay people's party so we got one two three four five six different parties okay the liberals want a minority okay i'm going by memory okay so these guys are in power. This is sort of in order of descent, I believe, right? So these guys were number one. Right? They ended up getting like 30% of the votes. Okay, 30% of the vote. Okay. In Canada, population is around 40 million. Okay, 40 million. 40 million. Okay. It's a little bit less than that, 38 million or something, but let's say 40 million. The conservatives got like 34% of the vote, I believe. 34% of the vote. Okay. And the reason these guys uh, have power is because of certain things that have been put into place uh, in Western democracy, in Canada, United States, where, um, where you protect citizens of a nation from rule of the majority right so for example rule of the majority is this let's assume 51 percent in a country vote for a certain party and 49 percent vote vote for the other party well true democracy the 51 percent get to rule right there's laws in place in canada and the united states that says you know what you can't just have 51 percent of a nation deciding everything for the 40 for the 100 percent of the population it doesn't work by the way that's, that's the idea right population 
because they could come out the 51 percent could say oh yeah that 49 percent is an enemy to our country we have to kill them all <laughs> that's the majority the majority votes i think george carlin uh, explained it best i think it was george carlin saying that uh democracy is like this it's like 10 people being in a room and nine uh, people vote to sodomize you and one person votes not to sodomize you you being the one voting for people not to sodomize you 90 percent voted to sodomize you so they take care of business right majority voted for it. democracy right you have to have protections to protect people the minority from the majority right that's a no that's a no-brainer okay now NDP I forget how many seats they got how many seats did they get uh, I know they got around um, 3 million votes okay so we're gonna this is percentage we'll we'll look this up as well so NDP got 3 million votes million votes and they ended up having how many seats I forget how many seats we're, we're gonna look this up actually that way I'm not going by memory this is numbers I can't remember all the numbers right but I know this NDP got around 3 million votes the People's Party got around 800,000 votes 800k okay the People's Party got no seats in government the NDP is supporting the Liberals and the NDP with the Liberals with the number of percent of the votes and the number of seats we're gonna look this up and you tell me if the mathematics makes sense to you right they end up governing Canada right we'll do the math let me look it up let me look it up apologies I, I wasn't planning to go in this direction but since we are uh, might as well get you the data I wish I realized uh, Canadian election results <laughs> here we go <laughs> there we go nice okay so the liberals got 33 percent of the vote 33 percent of the vote the conservatives got 34 percent the da, 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 a block Quebecois block Quebecois got uh, let me bring this up are they in order da, 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 da. yeah yeah this is gonna be in order cool uh, the NDP got 16 percent of the vote okay the the green that should be the green greens got 6.5 percent of the vote 6.5 the Bloc Quebecois got 7.6% uh, of the vote. Okay. And the People's Party got 1.6% of the vote. Okay. The number of seats is like this. Uh, seats won. These guys, the Liberals won 160 seats. The Conservatives won 119 seats. The NDP won 25 seats. The, bah, 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 the Greens won three seats. The Bloc Quebecois won 32 seats. Right. And the People's Party won zero seats. Okay. The number of people that voted, the popular vote, check this out, check this out. The popular vote was this. 5.5 million oops 5.5 million okay we'll do it with decimals that way it's clear okay 5.5 million voted for liberals 5.7 million voted for conservative 3 million voted for NDP <laughs> crazy 1.3 million voted for Bloc Quebecois 400,000 0.4 voted for the Greens and 0 0.84 okay voted and I'm rounding this one up <laughs> okay and I'm rounding this one this is legit right so
look at these numbers. You tell me where there might be issues here. Right? Where there might be issues here. Let me scroll down. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, I'm skipping a whole bunch of chat because I want to get caught up with the data that I'm putting up here. Greetings, Nagushka. Greetings, Void Hook. How are you doing? Uh, George Carlin was a gift to humanity. SQ, indeed. Politics and math. Results. Parti Kobakwa. Thank you very much, uh, Plutonic Flores. Maybe, maybe the autism will have to play a large part in the new revolution. Indeed, indeed. Allow blink. Uh, makes zero. Makes zero sense, Lord SQ. Indeed. Right. So take a look at this thing. If we do a little bit of mathematics right here, just the simplest dinghy's calculator. That's all you need. Like a little dinghy calculator like this, you'll get you'll get you'll you'll understand the ridiculousness of this thing. Right? You'll understand the ridiculousness of this thing. Now the way it works is these guys these clowns here, these guys are clowns. Together with these clowns, actually almost everybody's a clown, but these two clowns, okay, and I should have reordered this. Together with Party Kupakwa, right? They t they've teamed up and they're doing whatever it is they're doing, right? They're doing whatever it is they're doing. These seas are not given by votes, and I not know uh, of much dependence on them. Yeah, yeah. Not by yet. How are you doing? Uh, Plutonic flow. Seas can be distributed district-wise, for example, but the percentage in relation to the absolute numbers of votes. Indeed, indeed. Uh, scale in Belgium currently. The three smallest parties are running the country, while the two biggest ones that the people want are locked in opposition, right? So over here, if you want to find out how this works, right, and how this works, check this out. Check this out. <laughs> so NDP, NDP versus People's Party, People's Party, PC, I think it's PCP, People's let me let me get the right thing for it where is it let's see if they give the right thing for it uh, <laughs> pp yeah it is p oh no that's pp oh i don't know what the ppc ppc people's party of canada ppc let's call it ppc officially ppc PPC. Oops, we're using blue. PPC, right? Versus PPC, right? If you do this, all you gotta do is just take this and divide it by this. If you wanna look at the um, the numbers that way, the percentage that way. Oh, let me bring up the chat as well. It went behind. Boink. Right. So if you want to look at it this way, you could go, okay, two ways to look at it, really. You could go 3 divided by 0 0.84. That'll give you how many more, uh, how many times more, uh, how many times more people voted for NDP than PPC. So you just go 3. Is it going to work? Oh, yeah, there it is. Nice. 3. <laughs> I haven't used this forever. <laughs> like this, it's not even. It's not even working. <laughs> it's only a little thing. Three divided by point eight oh four. Like that's how the numbers are coming up. <laughs> I don't use the calculator very often, and if I do, it's usually a computer. So let's use the computer calculator. I should have prepped myself for this. So check this out. Three divided by three. Three divided by point. Eight, four, right? True. So they got 3.6 times. 3.6 times. So NDP got 3.6 times more votes than PPC. They end up getting 25 seats. PPC ends up getting zero, right? 
or you could look at it this way 0 0.84 right um, you could do um, should we do it that way let's see um, 0.84 divided by divided by 3 Boink. sure let's do it this way divided by 3 and this gives you 28% right so 28% uh, PPC got 28% of the votes that the NDP got they get 0 and these guys get 25 it gets worse if you do it compared to Bloc Quebecois right Bloc Quebecois versus PPC right you do it this way it's 1.3 over 0 0.84 we'll just do it this way it's simple enough right so 1.3 1 1.3 1 divided by 0.84 doink so this ends up being 1.5 times 1.5 times so Bloc Quebecois got 1.5 times the votes of the PPC, but they got 32 seats and these guys got zero, <laughs> right? And these guys are the true opposition in Canada, by the way, true opposition. These guys are the ones that are challenging mandates and all this jazz, right? Really, true opposition is these guys. There is no opposition here, really. This one's slowly coming about, but in the last three years, everything that these clowns and these clowns with collaboration with these two clowns right liberals with these two clowns we're pushing these guys we're pretty much supporting as well as these guys right so the only true opposition really in in canada the only true opposition in canada is these guys right now okay is these guys and they have been the opposition since day one they met with the truckers. They they opposed uh, mandates. They they did a lot of things, right? What's the solution to this? What's the solution to this? Okay. What's the solution to this? Now, there is a precedent set throughout history where people of a certain mindset when they find out they're being discriminated against they talk to each other and decide to start moving into regions and populating those regions so they can control the government the local government and then they slowly expand from that right so one of the solutions here is people who voted for the ppc if they all get together and decide to move to a certain province that has a certain number of seats mandated to in the federal government and they all vote the same right and then they're going to have representation in government right they'll have power right right now they're divided right so one of the places that we know this took place in recent history was i believe with the mormons where they were being persecuted so the leadership there said you know what let's pack it all up we're all going to ohio did they go to ohio uh, idaho i think they went to idaho right is that where the mormons are set up uh but i'm not pushing their philosophy by the way i'm just i'm not pushing anything I'll, i can honestly tell you right now as a disclaimer i voted for these guys <laughs> right i'm one of these guys right so in the last election i voted for these guys right because the true opposition to draconian mandates draconian measures right but i'm not telling you which way to vote for because majority of canadians voted the other way right utah utah thank you very much i don't hope what am i thinking oh <laughs> so they moved to utah right they moved to utah uh latter-day mormon saints with the metal tablets and john brown or something like this i don't know what the philosophy is <laughs> right they packed up and they all went to utah and in the last few in the last few decades 
they slowly build power where they control Utah. They have a huge say in policy. They have multi-billion dollar, they control multi-billion dollar corporations, okay? And they're protecting their community, okay? So that's one of the solutions to people that do not have a voice, right? Okay. And this has occurred in different places as well. Sometimes the centralized governments come in and crush them, right? Uh, it is what they do. It is what they do. Thank you very much, Nabushka, as well. Uh, the far, far, farm New York City pharmacy. Is that the pharmacy? <laughs> first time, um, salutations, first time chat. Thank you for popping in to our live stream. Plutonic Polis, Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith Jr. was an American religious leader and the founder of Mormonism and the Latter-day Saint movement. At the age of 24, Smith published the Book of Mormon, and by the time of his death, 14 years later, he had attracted tens of thousands of followers. Yeah, From tens of thousands of followers to controlling a state and building multi-billion dollar corporations. Ronnie, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome back. I was just catching up with chat. Right? Da, 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 da. Interesting. Canadian politics, and this occurs in a lot of uh, Western uh, societies uh, with the elections and stuff like this. But there are rules in place to protect the minority from the majority, right? Really, there are rules in place, right? It's called, uh, um, I forget what it's called. I put a video out on it in 2016 because people were asking me about, uh, or 2017 or something like that. People were asking me about the elections uh, in the United States, uh, how the results were for the 2016 election. And uh, I put out a video saying that people were saying, oh, it should all just be, and I don't agree with it all being just the number of votes that people get should represent in thing because again uh, centers of power will have a higher population and if we just go with center of power then they will be able to control everyone and that doesn't work that doesn't work at all right just take it on a global scale right so for example right now china has one point let's say five billion people india going getting close to 1.5 billion people there's like 8 billion people in the world right so 3 billion people live in China China plus India control 3 billion people 3 billion right total population in the world 8 billion total 8 billion right that's what is that 3 divided by 8 what percent 3 divided by 8 Doink. three divided by eight that's 37.5 percent of the world right 37.5 percent of the world if 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 let's assume we had a uh crafter how are you doing i heard china actually actually has only 1.3 billion uh like they overcounted their population or something possibly i would say uh, my guess would be that they may be undercounting right so we'll round it up to one and a half because i, I can almost guarantee you india is undercounting right <laughs> like there's no way they have the statistics to india to count them right uh, most likely anyway but let's assume together they control three billion people that's 37.5 percent of the global population according to canadian type of results that you see here 37 if in, in Canada if a party gets 37.5 percent of the votes usually they'll have a majority that means they can do anything they want so if we just go by one vote one person one vote and whoever gets control gets to do anything they want to anyone they want right if there's no protections put in place for that government right then China and India, if there was a world government, they would get to decide what everyone does in the world, right? 
that that's tyranny of the majority right there's laws in place I know in the United States in Canada it's not looking very good uh, they took the Charter of Rights and flushed it down the toilet right these guys these clowns these clowns and these clowns with collaboration of those clowns and with the silence of these clowns they took the Canadian Charter of Rights and flushed it down the toilet right these guys were the only people that were opposing it and they had no seats in government right they were they're just a political party and they were giving interviews and they were being blacklisted and labeled as everything under the sun to silence them okay so keep this in mind this is mathematics in politics extremely important extremely important and this is just the the tip of the iceberg when it comes to once you understand mathematics you're uh, you're able to look at the numbers and come up with your own conclusions and try to think about different types of systems if they make sense or if they don't make sense right and why certain things work a certain way right why you know why are there rules in place I know in the United States to protect the minority from the majority then why there was rules in place to a certain degree in Canada as well but these clowns with the silence if these clowns flushed that down the toilet right they said no protection of the minority from the majority they even flushed down the Nuremberg code right they said no Nuremberg code new look into Nuremberg code and you'll understand what what just happened in Canada since we're talking about Canada okay I'll end my political slant on this uh, for now and I don't go this political slant with individual students personally I would just give them because my students know mathematics the ones I work with anyway the, if I was going to give them this type of data I would just give them this data and ask them why they would think that this is legitimate or not legitimate and then I would explain the role of the majority aspect of things okay fun love math just gives you a certain perspective that you will not get if you didn't know any of this and just looked at the names and went oh okay right you look at the numbers you look at the mathematics you look at the data you go wait a second uh crafter they apparently overcount because of the way they get funding is that what it is uh more babies equals more money for local government so it's in the interest to count more possibly but uh for the first time in decades upon decades last number that came out of china uh they showed the population decrease so if they're overcounting uh china just released their last numbers that they released for the quarter uh, i believe it was four quarter might have been yearly uh they had a population decrease in china right so there must be some kind of legitimate uh counting going on because otherwise they would just see continuous count up they actually release numbers saying that the population is decreasing in china i think it dropped by eighty-five thousand or something in either in the last quarter or last year I, I was assuming in maybe it was in last census in Canada we, we do the census every four years I don't know what it is in China I don't know what it is in China uh, right I don't know at least numbers are cool indeed Ronnie I like math because it's objective with zero emotions or bias indeed indeed it's brilliant it's brilliant crafter yeah there's some uh, profs that believe it's been decreasing since five years ago yeah yeah which is why China uh, took away their one child one policy their one child policy thing right see death how are you doing see death for 20 subscribe how many months how many months see that how are you doing and welcome back to our live stream subscribe prime subscribe Woo -hoo. salute salute <laughs> welcome back brother hope you're doing well hope you're doing well hope you're doing well boop, boop. I gotta fix this 
Twitch thing. As soon as it gives me some kind of ban. Da 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 da. Oh, it just kicks me up on that thing. I gotta fix this thing. How do you fix this thing? I'm just gonna deny it and maybe it won't. It keeps on repeating the same message. Wow, wow. Yeah, they set the reach uh, pol uh, policy for obvious reasons, right? Da 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 da. da. Intuition, math, statistics, for example. But the math itself is an object for self. Yeah, here's the thing with mathematics. A lot of people think like this. This the saying came out: trust the science. The trust and science they shouldn't be used in the same word, unless you put you cannot necessarily trust the science because the science is based on doing the science that's not method it's based on assumptions and all this jazz that also applies to statistics because the numbers are the numbers the data is the data depending on how you calculate it right so how you acquire the data is extremely important a lot of people a uh, lot of surveys analysis and stuff uh, they the questions are loaded the data is flawed and stuff like this so data integrity is ridiculously important in science right and anything you do the other thing is who does the interpretation right i put out a article back in 2005 called anomalies prisons and geophysics how governments use data and how to uh, how to stop them uh, and i had a paragraph specifically in there talking about the most important thing about data is first of all you need good data integrity i.e who's collecting data and the other thing you need is who's interpreting data because whoever is interpreting data they can represent the data in any which way they want right they can manipulate the data okay they can manipulate the data okay haha <laughs> eduardo it's <laughs> like a science doubter he says i love it why did you frame those comics behind you? Ah, because I like them. This is Underdog. It's the first appearance of Underdog, right? And this one, I believe the center fold is, uh, fold is missing, so it's not complete, right? So it's the first appearance of Underdog, uh, missing the center fold, but it's the first appearance of Underdog, and I love the cover. And this is uh, Paul uh, Terry's Mighty Mouse, and he was like, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, um... Oh, I forgot his name. The guy who did uh, was famous for doing uh, Donald Duck. Um, Carl Barks. Carl Barks doing Donald Duck. Uh, Paul Terry or Jerry? Uh, Mighty Mouse. That's a great cover as well. It's a great cover as well. Uh, gang, I'm just going to step away for one second because I hear Kitty Cats doing something. I just want to make sure they're not destroying something. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll be right back.
Ben Kirgat. Hilarious. <laughs> See that? I remember on the road as a kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. I loved it. I loved it. Speed of lightning, roar of thunder on the knock. Lark barks. Carl barks almost sounds like. Uh, what does it sound like? Where did it go? Da -da -da. Oh, I lost it. Chat is whack. Twitch chart sounds like Carl Marx. It does. It does. Kitty see, kitty destroy. <laughs> kitty see, kitty destroy. Actually, our housemates downstairs in the complex downstairs, they just got a new kitten like two days ago. Uh, I want to go pay him a visit. Like a little kitten. So I want to go, uh, go see the little kitten. Uh, I'm rather a Marxist than a Marxist. Haha, <laughs> awesome. Marxist indeed. Don't be a Marxist. What does the cat say? Meow. Sal the Slayer. <laughs> Hilarious. Pourquoi? How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Chicho is uh, hurting. What am I doing? Chicho is hurting cats on and offline. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, for quoi? Canadian elections, last elections. Right. Last elections. Th these were these were the stats for it. That's what we're talking about. Just in case you missed it. Right. So NDP got three point six times more votes than the People's Party of Canada. They got twenty five seats. People's Party of Canada zero seats. Bloc Quebecois got. 1.3 million votes 1.5 times the number of votes of the people's party of canada they got 32 seats people's party of canada got zero seats canadian democracy at work <laughs> canadian politics like mind-boggling insane <laughs> you could make a career of trash talking canadian politics really see that we gotta get it yeah we got a lot of people need to do a lot of things i'm gonna take this down gang let's see what else comes up let's see what else comes up enough politics and mathematics let's see if there's anything else coming up nice i like this thing it's cleaning it up wow when he got uh, confronted by you. Yeah, he's, clowns are clowns. Clowns are clowns. Clowns are clowns. I'm gonna have a, some more pomegranates and apples. And this is an open discussion, so we can talk about whatever. Right. Pomegranates and apples with a little bit of mint sprinkled on. So addictive. So addictive. See, that's, that's I haven't tried. I haven't I haven't tried the chicho food yet. It's on my counter, just waiting. But I'm saving it. Awesome. Which one? What did you get? You got the applesauce or the blackberry sauce? I mean, jam. Applesauce or blackberry jam? Or the quince. Made some quince jam too. Mmm. Delicious. Delicious. Don't hold, hold on to it too long. Okay. It's got to be eaten at some point. I got three jars, but only one has a label. Oh. Um, I have no idea what they are. You don't know what they are. I can't read the label. Change of surprise. <laughs> Hilarious. If one of them is clear, it'd be like honey. Uh, if uh, if it's black, it'd be blackberry jam. And if it's uh, like uh, not clear, translucent is honey, right? Golden. Another one, if it's um, like cream color, it's going to be the applesauce or red colored it could be the applesauce as well you have jam okay good 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 and just trudeau sounds like a spoiled brat can't 
understand his voice anymore. Yeah, I don't listen to anything he he's they're putting out. I can't I can't do it either. <laughs> Plutonic blurks one of ten contained shrooms. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> funny, 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 funny. I'll be sitting at work, and things start bending. <laughs> And you see everything for what it is. The veil will be lifted, and you will run for your life, <laughs> depending on where you work. <laughs> or you will cower away in a corner, calling for mama. <sighs> Hilarious. Funny, funny, funny. Mathematics is crazy. The, I can honestly tell you. Uh, in Canada complete class collapse of uh, education it's a complete collapse of education it it is they are not preparing children in Canada to be self-sufficient free-thinking individuals it's they're not it's very dangerous very dangerous times very dangerous times Fear is the mind killer, Allah God says, and that's from the book Dune. Where's my Dune? That's not Dune, that's God Empire. Where's my Dune? I have Dune here. If you haven't read the book Dune by Frank Herbert, read Dune by Frank Herbert. Extremely important. Extremely important. Let's do some trigonometry. We should do some trigonometry. Let's do some trigonometry. See, that can't be worse than here. Uh, there are 26 schools here in one district where nobody passed math or reading. At least they're failing students. At least you know who's not passing and who's not failing. In Canada, I don't think they're allowed to fail anyone anymore. Like, they can't even fail them. Trigonometry? Let's do trigonometry. It's okay if they're failing people. At, at least they're giving them a grade that says fail. Here, they don't. I don't know of any. All right. Ronnie, the education system all over the world is declining, it seems. We have uh, young kids now who are aspiring to become OnlyFans models. Uh, well, I don't, I don't think everywhere in the world, Ronnie. I think in the Western world, yes. But I think in other parts of the world, uh, education is producing a lot of uh, technical people. The, Ronnie says the number of kids that want to become doctors, scientists, mathematicians are declining. Possibly. Um, and uh, Pourquoi says in Quebec now kids pass because of age. Mind you, Canada elected a PM because of his hair. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, in Canada, I don't think they're allowed to fail anyone. And education is based on provincial. And I don't think they fail any kids in BC. Uh, they don't do it. I see that I had a great idea to fix college fees in schools. We just mail free degrees to everyone. Fill in the blank of what, of what you want. I want to be be doctor, lawyer, so uh, here's one way to fix it. Guarantee a job, right? If a school is gonna give someone a degree, you know, charge them hundred thousand dollars to educate them on a degree, they must guarantee that that person can work in this job within five years time. Otherwise the payments, uh, they don't have to make any payments for their student loans and student loans should never be guaranteed. The only, the, the, if a university is going to charge a hundred thousand dollars to ed, you know charge for any type of education, I don't care what it is, right? They should take on the risk as well as the students that sign up for that thing, right? But loaner beware, right? Loaner should take all the risk for giving out loans. They should have done do, their due diligence to see if it's a legitimate place to loan money. Yeah, like like Simpsons being in elementary school all year. Plutonic <laughs> bros. Nafayed, I got I have two cal uh, calculus that I found 
found and those numbers on my heroes uh, it may be conspiracy theory but I think they're uh, special in some way ba -ba 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 -ba. some way of my reference frame at least just to mention never mind that. <laughs> I become a computer science for money not because I want to crafter says does anyone go to college to actually be educated I did I went to university to get a degree in geophysics and mathematics let's be honest the only reason anyone goes is the promise of you won't have to work hard for your money uh, I that wasn't my case I knew I was gonna have to work hard for my money and I picked uh, a discipline that required you to work hard geophysics was not an easy it's not a not physically not mentally uh, career to go into and I worked my ass off to get a math degree uh, to get my math minor so I and I know students that don't go to university just to be at university and for the cultural social aspect of things they go there to get a degree yeah some some gang let's do a little bit of trigonometry okay let's do some trigonometry okay now trigonometry at the beginning stages of uh, university uh, at high school basically uh, so check this out uh, in grade 8, 9, even in grade 10, they tell you trigonometry is this trick. And it is. And it is. Right. So grade 8, 9, and not Grade, grade, we'll talk about high school. Grade 8, 9, and 10. So grade 8, 9, and 10. Grades. Right? They say trig is about right angle triangle. In Canada, anyway, they tell you trig is about right angle triangles. Okay. In grade 11 and 12, 11, 12 grades, you realize trig is really about circles. Okay. That's one of the important things you have to really appreciate, especially when you're getting into grade 11 and grade 12 because when we're trying to study circles right let's assume you're trying to study circles and we've talked about this why would you want to try to study a circle right you would try to study a circle because a circle represents the ideal cyclic function because let's assume you stand here you're here and you're moving around Boink. Doink, 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 right? And doink, if you're here, you're moving around, then you've gone one cycle, right? And the reason we want to study cyclic functions is because cycles are everywhere in our world, everywhere in our world. Not just the earth revolving around the sun, rotating on its axes, the moon going around having some kind of orbit the tides of the ocean going up and down right it's not just the physical part of the cyclic nature of life it's also embedded within biology our systems our matter that we occupy okay it's also embedded within economics huge huge you can actually invest money in cyclic companies right invest when the cycle is down cycle goes up you make you sell it you buy and there's trillions of dollars really trillions of dollars being traded on this cycle we talked about this right we did a whole thing based on uh, personal finance right investing in personal finance we have a playlist on sensor 2 that talks about the cyclic nature and these cycles can vary depending on if you want to look at it on the micro scale or the macro scale right are you just looking at it as a if you're a trader as a day trader or you're investing for your retirement on a long scale right are you looking at it based on 
millisecond trading, which is there's a lot of programs out there. Most stocks on the market are traded based on are automatic. This machine is doing it, right? Minute, 10 minute, day, week, month, year, decade. Is that what you're investing in? What cycle? What speed are you investing, right? Is it going to take you, you know, one second to make this cycle? Or is it going to take you one day to complete the cycle? Is it going to take you one week, one month, one year, one decade, right? Doesn't make a difference in regards to analyzing the circle. Because if you're studying a cyclic nature, it applies to all of these, right? You don't care about the length, the time it takes to complete a cycle. You just want to know how to analyze the cycle, right? Apologies if I'm not reading the chat game because I want to get this train of thought out of the way, right? So one of the reasons we study circles is because they are the ideal cyclic function. Because if a cycle fits this model, right? Or if we can create a base model right mathematical model right that we can analyze based on the ideal cyclic function we can take that and apply it to multiple systems within our society may it be based on economics politics biology right nature doesn't matter right that's the reason we study circles right so what is the one thing you do when you study cyclic functions? Okay, what is the thing you do to use study cyclic functions? You take the ideal cyclic function, let's erase this. You take the ideal cyclic function, let's create another circle, right? You take the ideal cyclic function, which is a circle, you find its center, Right. And you put it on a grid. You break it down. Right? That way you can put numbers on on your circle, right? So we put on a Cartesian coordinate system, that's what this is called, Cartesian coordinate system, X and Y axes. And we say, okay, if we're standing here, right, and if we're gonna go around the circle how do we analyze that the way you analyze this the way you analyze this is let's say you want to move here you can say okay go up a certain angle a certain distance along the arc length of the angle right or you could also do this because you put on the Cartesian coordinate system. You could say, create your right angle triangle, and that links these guys up, right? That's how the triangle, right angle triangle, is connected to a circle. You create a right angle triangle, and this becomes your X, and this becomes your Y. So the coordinate here is now X and Y, right? So on a circle, right, if you want to know where to go if you're standing here, right, I could tell you to go a certain angle on the circle at a certain radius from a certain center point, and you end up there. Or I could give you the coordinates of the circle of where you want to end up right easy right. one of the things we do in mathematics or mathematicians do right they will try to simplify calculations as much as possible and the easiest number to deal with is the number one right so one thing they do they take a circle they're trying to analyze this trying to simplify things right you call this a unit circle a unit circle and what is a unit circle it's a circle where the radius is equal to one right so we're gonna take this 
and say the radius r is equal to 1. Okay. When you're talking about a circle that has a radius of 1, you call it a unit circle. That's it. Simple calculation. Okay. Now, we want to analyze this. We want to figure out what happens when you have to deal with the cyclic function with something that repeats, right? Well, you could do this. You could do this. You could say, you know what? Because this is based on a Cartesian coordinate system, right? We're going to have a couple things that happen. Okay. One of them is our x value here is going to change as we move along the circle, right? Because this x is basically going to move this way or this way, depending on where you are here, right? As you move along, this x is going to move along, right? And if the radius of this thing is 1, then based on a Cartesian coordinate system, the point here, if the radius is 1, you bring this thing down, well, the x point is 1. That's a given, right? Because we're dealing with a unit circle and it's got a radius of 1, so this length here is going to be 1. And the y, the y value here is zero right so you can say okay you know what i want to i want to find out what happens right what happens to my x value and my y value as i move around the circle right as i move around the circle i want to know what happens so for example let's take a look at this what's our x value here and y y value there do you guys know and then try to figure out, tell me what the x value is here and what the y value will be here and what the x value will be here and what the y value will be here. Okay. What do you guys think? What is it going to be? Right? Because once you see it, you cannot unsee it. Right? Once you see this, you cannot unsee. Okay. What's going to happen if the radius of this thing is 1? As you move this way, right, it's the radius. Exactly, Ronnie, right? Doink. So you move along here. Well, the x value from here, it's starting at 1, and it's getting smaller, 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 smaller. Here it's 0. So the x value becomes 0. The y value started off here at 0 and worked its way up, right? And if the radius is 1, that's 1. Right? Yeah, negative 1 and 0. Because you're coming this way, the x value of 0 here is going in a negative direction. So this becomes negative 1 and 0. Right? And as you move down, right, the y value went from 1, reached 0, and it goes to negative 1. So this becomes 0 and negative 1. So what you can do is say, okay, cool, we got some base coordinates for this unit circle for the x and y value, right? So let's take this information and create another graph, okay? And we're going to do this. Yeah, we'll do this here. Oops. My line is not straight there. Let's make it straight. Okay. So, first of all, here, let's make two. Okay. How many degrees is it all the way around the circle? Okay. The whole imagery number derivation also comes from this imagine them yeah, yeah 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 so take a look at this right 360 degrees right so if you move all the way around the circle if you turn around 
We've, we just did a 360. That was like, oh, 360, Ronnie, pourquoi? Everybody's 360. We know it's 360 all the way around. German minister doesn't. German minister <laughs> thought that 360 went met 180. That's the level of intelligence, right? We're the smart ones, right? Plutonic Pluris. Xbox 360, baby, Ronnie says. <laughs> One dumb pupil, Plutonic Pluris says, right? So, a full circle, a full, full cycle, right? And that's what we're going to call it. One cycle takes 360 degrees, right? So we want to take a look at one cycle because as soon as we can figure out what happens in one cycle, we know what happens in every cycle because it repeats. Brilliant, brilliant, right? We figure that out. We figure it out for a thousand cycles, infinite cycles. We can figure it out for the backwards <laughs> going around, right? So let's look at one cycle. One cycle is 360 degrees, right? So. On the x-axis, we're going to put theta degrees. Okay. So let's put the numbers on there for now. We go from 0 to 360 degrees. 0 to 360 degrees. And the reason I'm making two graphs is because we're going to uh, do two graphs, right? We're going to graph the movement of the x-coordinate, what the x does, which And what the Y does right because as you're moving along when you move here your Y value is here when you go there your Y value is that doink, 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 doink. right so that's what we're gonna look at let's put the Y value in the top and the X value in the bottom graph so we're gonna call this Y and we're gonna call this X one thing you want to do, you want to find out the range. Okay. Pourquoi? What? Trigonometry can be interesting. Whoa, mind blown. <laughs> we're talking about so the uh, sine, sinus or cosine wave is just shifted. So it's just shifted. Indeed. We'll talk about it. Take a look. So let's put the Y up top, X in the bottom graph. Okay. And let's talk about the range that we're going to do. Right? Because what we did right now, we said we defined the parameters. Right? Like if you're playing a game, like a soccer, football game, basketball game, but you draw the map. Right? Okay. Robert Anton Wilson, or was it Timothy Leary, they called it the mind map or something like this? The map of the, oh, I forget the terminology for, uh, what do you call it? Robert Anton, uh, mapping the something. Ch -ch -ch, right? So for the degrees, we went from 0 to 360, because after 360, it repeats, right? OK. What's the range that the y can go? Well, if we start here, the y can be 0, right? It goes all the way up here, and the y reaches a maximum of 1, right? And then it starts coming down again, right? Do, 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 do reaches zero again, goes down again, all the way to negative one, and then goes up again to zero. So the limit, the boundary that our y value can exist in is between one and negative one. So let's put our limits on there. One and negative one. Right. It can go from, start from zero, Go all the way to one, come back down to negative one, go up to zero, right? Well, where does it do this? Where does it do this? Well, it does it. The maximum points, right, occurs here, and that's 90 degrees, right? If you go from there to there, that's 90 degrees. The minimum point occurs at 270 degrees. But one thing you should have noticed that we're talking about a circle. Right? That's the beauty of it, right? Once you apply it on a grid and take a look at it, break it down, right? When you're a kid, when you take things apart, you can understand what they are, right? Or try to understand what they are, what their components are, 
and then maybe you could create something new or put it back together again maybe you could put it back together better right so when we're taking a look at a circle right going around and around and around before we put a grid on it it was a whole circle we were looking at and it could have varied from one location to another but as soon as we put a grid on it we realized that hey take a look at this thing in this quadrant this quadrant right when we break it into a quarter this thing is also sort of mirrored here and then it's a mirrored here and it's mirrored there so logic says if we can understand what's happening in this quadrant we can understand what's happening here here and here cool so these four quadrants really make up a full circle when we can understand the first quadrant we can pretty much understand the second quadrant the third quadrant the fourth quadrant right our critical points really to divide these quadrants are the following this point this point this point and this point so on the theta axis here, on the theta axis here, let's put the degrees on here because we went from zero to 360 degrees. We went all the way around. So let's break this into the quadrants that we're interested in. So this quadrant here, this point here is at 90 degrees. You come this way, that's at 180 degrees. You come all the way here, that's 270 degrees. And then if you go all the way, that's 360 degrees, right? So let's break, break it down into the four quadrants that we have. So if you want to break 0 to 360 down to four quadrants, and I put out a video on this, on how to break a line into pieces. A long time ago, like 10 years ago, I put out this video, how to break a line into pieces. Because we want to break it into four pieces, it's even cut it in half. So we're going to cut this in half. And then we're going to have two quadrants here and two quadrants here. And two is even, so break it in half again. Break it in half again. And then what we got, this becomes 90, 180, 270, and then 360. Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. Right? Okay. Cool. We're going to do the same here. Let's line them up. 90. 180 270 right okay cool now we're ready to put our points on here because we have our this is called the domain for the x-axis but anyway we have our boundary for the x we got our boundary for the y and we got the quadrants marked off right and the x also does the same goes from one to negative one right goes all the way to one and then comes back to negative one one negative one one negative one Right. So let's do this. We're going to break the x as well from 1 all the way to negative 1. Okay. Now let's figure out. Man, this is relaxing. Awesome. <laughs> relaxing math is the best math. <laughs> all right. So what we want to do is figure out what's going on in these quadrants, where we are on here. Right? Here, for the y, we're at 0. When we're at zero degrees, the y is zero. So we're here. Actually, let's do this in different color. Let's do this in green. We like green, let's do green, right? Who knew learning math was so relaxing? No wonder all the students fall asleep in math. I, some, I hope you're not finding this boring though. This is relaxing, but not boring, I hope, right? Unfortunately, sometimes, you don't get the, that aspect of it when you're sitting in a classroom, air conditioning going, buzzing, 30 people, some don't care. Some of the people sometimes that don't care are the instructors and usually the curriculum is set up not to be exciting. Ronnie, I love math, me too. So when we're standing here, right our y value is zero cool we're gonna put it there let's look at the nodes here when we're standing here my y value is one so at 90 degrees we're at one 
Let's go to this node. At this point, our Y value is zero and we're at 180 degrees, right? So at 180 degrees, we're back down to zero. Over here, we're at 270 degrees and our Y value is negative one. And if we go back to zero again, our Y value is zero and we're at 360 degrees, right? So we're back here. Now, take a look at this thing. You might look at this and go, oh, so the graph must look like this, lines going straight, but it doesn't. One of the reasons it doesn't is because this is curved, Weep. right? So the way we connect these dots is not just lines going like this, it's curved. Now, if you love music, that should be, you should know what that is. And that's sound wave, really. If you like going to the ocean, swimming, you should be familiar with this. That's waves in the ocean. If you're trading stocks, you should be familiar with this type of motion. That's trading highs and lows right if you understand what light is you'll know that light is a wave particle wave right oh god we do this math in my wing chunk training really very cool very cool green for hope awesome for qua not green for stupid climate but no can't wait to see Chicho draw the perfect waves. Awesome. We make a Chicho waves. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Sweet, sweet. Sir Wise Brat. Salutations. Right? So this, this, this wave has a name. Okay, we call it a sine wave. Sine wave. Let's do it for the X as well, right? Where we are on the X axis, as we move around the circle, what our X position is. And then it's hard to do it with two things. How do we do this? We go, as we're moving around, oh, you can't even see my other pen. As we're moving around, oh my God, it's so difficult to do. It's like an amusement park thing when you're doing your thing, right? The x-axis looks like this. When we're at 0 degrees, we're at 1. When we're at 90 degrees, we're at 0. When we're at 180 degrees, the x is negative 1. When we're at 270 degrees, the x is 0 again. And we're at 360 degrees, we're at 1 again. So this way for the x-axis looks like this. Now, remember, this thing keeps on going around and around and around. So this doesn't end here. This continues like this and does this. It's basically picking up from here and going like this. So this part goes like this. Over here is picking up just like this and going like this again, right? So it continues, same with this, right? And it comes down. Right? This one is called a cosine wave cosine wave sine wave okay. now how is this related to triangles well it kicks into Sokotoa sine cosine uh, and tangent and stuff right so if you studied triangles right in grade 8 9 and 10 you learn about opposite hypotenuse adjacent right so if you have let's do this in red if you have a triangle right and here's your angle right you call this side the opposite 
you call this side the adjacent to theta, and you call this side the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Okay. Looney Woo, thank you very much for the follow. Right. So you learn you learn that sine theta sine of this angle is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Opposite divided by hypotenuse. Okay. Now keep this in mind. This is uh, this is a ratio right so what it's saying is this it's saying this side divided by this side is sine theta right so sine of this angle is defined as the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse okay why is this important because no matter how big your triangle is or how small your triangle is right. so let's draw another right angle triangle so we have two triangles here right we got this and we got the bigger triangle and this side is again the opposite side from this angle and this whole length again is the hypotenuse right goes all the way to there right and this one is the smaller hypotenuse. So sine of this angle is still going to be the opposite side relative to the hypotenuse. So we don't even need to draw the hypotenuse twice, right? Because it's the same hypotenuse. So I'm going to erase this and just call this height. height. And the hypotenuse depends on which triangle you're talking about, right? So sine of an angle is basically saying that, hey, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is going to be the same no matter how big or how small the triangle is. Now we've got three triangles. That's the opposite. That's the hypotenuse. This ratio is going to be the same. So for a given angle, for a given angle, let's say, let's say we have 30 degrees, right? Here, let me write that bigger so you see it better. Let's say you have 30 degrees. Let's say you have 30 degrees, right? This side divided by this side would be the same as if you had a smaller triangle and if this was 30 degrees, would be the same as this side divided by this side, okay? So if this was the same as this and this was A and this was B, right and this was x and this was y the sign trigonometry tells us this that a over b a over b would have to be equal to x over y oops x over x over y not y over x x over y x over y right why is this important well this is they're called similar triangles this is those models when you're building models and stuff. If you're into collecting anything or if you're into engineering, interested in engineering or models or anything really, right? When you look at it, when they say, oh, this model is, you know, one to 10 or 10 to one, right? That's, this is what they're talking about. So for example, if this was you, right? This is called proportionality, by the way, right? Sim they call it similar triangles in trigonometry, but you can also call it proportional or proportional, right? So if you have you here and there's a little mini you, right? And your height is, let's say, six feet and your arm is two feet. I don't know if that would be legit or not. Two feet, two feet, three feet. <laughs> yeah, two, two feet. Two feet is pretty small. That's like T Rex level arms, isn't it? So let's say three feet, right? So let's say your arms are three feet, and if you want to make a little mini version of you that is two feet tall, then you can figure out how big the arm needs to be, right? Because all you do, you say 
this divided by this has to equal that divided by that. So all you would do is say 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2 over x. Cross multiply. Doink, doink. You get 6x is equal to 6. And divide by uh, 6. So x is equal to 1. So you have to make this 1. Your arm 1. Feet. Right? 10 minute warning? Are we into 2 hours already? Elder God, wow, time flies, what? Yeah, yeah, we're going to go over time a little bit, a little bit. Sorry, gang, right? I think you have put me in detention and deform after what he says. He's a good package. <laughs> Thanks, Dino. So I just want to make that clear, that sometimes it's not clear when they teach Soko to, Soko to you guys, initially when you're studying, uh, detention, detention, for says. <laughs> when they teach you uh, trigonometry in grade 8, 9, and 10, it's not clear that why is sine important. It's because the sine of an angle is the same value for any size triangle. Wow, incredible. The ratio of one side divided by the other side for any given angle is the same. Cool. This also applies to cos theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse adjacent over hypotenuse and it also applies to tan theta which is opposite over adjacent opposite over adjacent right now take this information that you know right take this information that we just learned that for a given angle the ratio of one side to another side is the same right take this triangle apply it here to a unit circle right to a unit circle okay and realize that a unit circle is a circle defined as having a radius one right and realize that hey wait a second this thing tells us it doesn't make a difference how big the triangle is you could have a bigger triangle And if you drew a circle, whoosh, you can't even do it. My, my triangle's so big, right? You can draw a circle, come all the way down. Wee, 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 wee. You could take a bigger circle. My circle's off. You could take a bigger circle, right? You could take a bigger circle. And this graph is going to look almost identical the only thing that's going to change is the radius this is just going to change right so if the radius of this is two right we take a unit circle we multiply the radius by two right double the radius all that's going to happen this wave is going to look the same it's going to have the same motion the only thing that happens is it goes from two all the way down to negative two so it just amplifies it, right? It just makes it look like that. Wow, cool. Now we can take circles. And if we were making music, you can take this music, right? You can take these waves and amplify them. Make sound. Cool. But wait a second, it's going to have the same pattern. All of this is just going to amplify it, right? Well, we can take the same graph, right? And graph it based on how fast it goes around, right? If, remember, we talked about if it takes one second, one day, one week, one month, one year, one decade. If this 0 to 360, instead of being an angle, if it was time, how long does it take for it to go around, right? What you can do is create waves that are not only amplified differently, bigger or smaller, but also change in frequency. The period changes. This is called a period, how long it takes to do one cycle. Right? So all of a sudden you could do whoosh, 
Obviously, it should be a better graph. It should be a, right. Maybe we could do it here. Faster cycle, right? And what you can do with these things, you can multiply them, you can add them, you can move them, you can translate them, right? You could do a lot of things. Once you understand the base mathematics of trigonometry, these functions, these formulas, what you can do is you can take what color is going to stand up. You can take a general sine function. You can say it's a function, right? Here, let's do a little bit of erasing. We'll kill this, right? So our function up here is f of x is equal to sine theta, right? That's what it is, f of x being your y, right? What you can do is manipulate this thing. You could go f of x is equal to a number. So we know what this looks like. This guy looks like our green graph, right? Well, what if we want to graph the following function? Negative 2 sine... Um, going to use pi. I haven't talked about pi yet. <laughs> Sine uh, 3 theta plus 4 uh, minus, actually plus 6, right? So let's say this is our function. We've taken our original function and we're going to do this to it. Well, what does that do? Well, the negative 2 flips the original function this way and it makes the radius 2 so it amplifies it by a factor of 2. This guy 3 here compresses the function to a third of its period. This guy here moves it 4 units back. right? This guy here moves it 6 units up. So we're taking our original function and manipulating it and this can be done with to model certain either physical or um, uh, physical systems like a ferris wheel right you can model a ferris wheel based on a sine function tides of the ocean you can model this way or you can use these types of things to model market reactions and stuff like this that's sort of a good intro to the power of trigonometry and why it is you study right angle triangles because you want to study circles why do you want to study circles because you want to know what cyclic functions how cyclic functions behave why do you want to study how cyclic functions behave because cyclic functions are embedded in our societies are embedded in our lives are embedded in nature they're part of life right and once you can model life Man, you could do a lot of things with it, right? You could do a lot of things with it. Okay. That's trigonometry. And it just explodes from there, right? And we have a playlist, trigonometry playlist. Here, I'll link it up for you guys. Um, on our sensor tube channel, if you go to... Do, 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 if you go to our sensor tube playlist or sensor tube channel and go to playlist i'm just gonna do this math where's my trigonometry playlist uh, da, da, da. hey hmm. trick trick oh, i should put math on there too so people can find it silly me math didn't bring it up Boink. here's our trigonometry playlist okay see that's excellent I like how you describe the function here. Yeah, it's super cool. It, it's crazy cool. And we, we can get on it uh, next time as well. Uh, just talk about it. Here, let me save this. Doink. There we go. Okay. Cool. Doink. Uh, we sort of did a 
not a quick ending, sort of brought it all together again, sort of did a little summary. Um, but that's a good little intro for it. And we didn't go too much over time. That's good. That's good. Uh, and we can definitely explore this uh, more in the future and look at different functions and actually graph something like this, right? And do the translation. So maybe in the next math stream, we'll pick up from here and just graph something like this based on what we created here. We'll create a table and I'll show you how it's done. Super cool, super cool way of doing it. And so easy, so easy. Now Sal gets Chicho vaccine. That's, that's, yeah, and Via, and Via. They might be passed out now. They might be passed out. They were running around, playing around and stuff like this. Um, gang, let's call the stream. Let's call the stream. That was fun. That was definitely fun. Yo Fist, thank you very much for the follow. Salutations, salutations, and we're welcome to our uh, live stream channel. And gang, do not forget, do not forget. Free Assange, Free Assange, Free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital's power to humanity. Something that we desperately need in our societies. Right. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange on Wikileaks playlist on Sensor Two. Okay. See that. Thank you for the compliment, see that. <laughs> Gang, if you want to know what this work is about, I am on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Chicho, C H Y C H O. You can follow the work there. We have a sub stack page as well and a subscribe star page. My pleasure, Porqua. My pleasure, Porqua. You can definitely follow the work there. For those of you that are supporting this work on Patreon and on Substack for now, thank you very much for the support, as well as the people that are supporting us on Twitch. It is in large part because of the support that we're getting on these two platforms, including the handful of people that are supporting us on Sensor2, uh, that we're able to do what it is that we are doing. And I thank you very much, as well as the support we're getting from the mods, both on Twitch, on our video sharing platforms, and on our little server that we've built a little community that uh, we're sharing information. In discussing things and talking about things and trying to figure things out including talking about mathematics uh and gang we do announce these live streams uh 30 minutes before we go live on twitter minds vk gap uh parlor and getter you can follow the work there and we do have a soundcloud page where we upload certain podcasts uh certain streams of podcasts on soundcloud and those podcasts are available on uh, should be available on your favorite podcasting platform thanks was fun yeah super fun i love explaining trig so much fun it takes a fair bit of concentration to be able to link everything up uh and sometimes and it's different every time almost different every time because sometimes i put in more things sometimes i put in things i shouldn't have put in because i was trying to go in this direction i go on a tangent i gotta come back track it's super fun it's super fun as a as, a, as an educator someone that teaches it uh, I've been doing it for 20 plus years and I still love it because it keeps me sharp that's what mathematics does gang really you want to become smarter learn mathematics you want to become master of your own domain your own life learn mathematics it it's my it's my important recommendation to everyone right you want to be a, be a free thinking human being in control of your own destiny learn mathematics Aside from that, gang, uh, I hope you have a fantastic next couple of days. We're mapping global conflicts on Tuesday, starting at 1 p.m., part four. Join us if you can. Bye, everyone.